We're uh, very happy to be on the stage for the first time. Aaron and I have been presenting together for the last couple of years here at the Expo. We're kind of the sunny and share of uh, <laughs> user experience. Um, and we've been talking mostly about social interactions, social interfaces, design patterns, things like that. And, and we, we could talk about that for a couple days, but, but I'm not. really tired of talking yeah, about I'm, that. I've gotten really sick of talking about that too. So why don't, why don't we talk about something else? Okay, why don't we talk about user experience? Sounds good. So, Christian, what is user experience? What is user experience? Oh, I wish you hadn't asked me that. Um, no, seriously. User experience stands for, user, UX stands for user experience. User experience is sort of the bastard stepchild of UI engineering, uh, graphic design, usability testing, HCI, cognitive science, content strategy, all these disciplines that have kind of assembled each other like Voltron into a, a new uh, way of looking at products and developing for the web, developing apps, or working with a digital reality where the experience cuts across all these different aspects and of the service. What about design? How well, does design that is a in? core part of UX. Design is kind of like the, the spirit behind UX and one of the main components of it. Um, the, the, the tools of design that, that deal with ideation, with sketching, with rapid iteration, problem solving, those are all kind of in the DNA of UX. It's something that, that actually people are starting to realize that they can't treat it like a last minute thing, like we're going to slap a UI on at the end once we finish the development. I hear that a lot. I hear people coming to me saying, we want to be the Apple of cloud solutions, or the Groupon of car sales, or you know, whatever your example might be. And I think you know, that, that could happen, but it can't happen by copying an interface. I mean, just making a white background in your website no, doesn't make you like Apple? It doesn't give buttons. you a great user experience? You really need to copy the type of philosophy and the mindset that these companies that you aspire to be like and bring that inside. But we're using that same shade of green they use on the Mint homepage. And I don't that's think that gonna quite give us a counts. Real, no, okay. So what, you know, I guess the question is, what, do you th what is it going to take? Let's yeah. talk about that a little bit. What okay, we well, that's, a, that's an important question because we're, we're talking about something more, like I said, than just hiring a pixel pusher to, to fix your look and feel. Um, it starts with vision. It starts with ownership, leadership. The founder of the company needs to live, sleep, dream, breathe the user experience of the product. Um, if it's not the founder, it might be the CEO, it might be the head of the division, it might be you, it should be you probably if you're here today. It, it might be a product manager. So like Steve Jobs? If you can hire Steve Jobs, he'll probably nail that and, and take care of that problem for you. Um, if he's not available, you may have to make yourself into the user experience champion, the person who's going to actually own that experience from soup to nuts across the life cycle of the product. Um, and it's going to have to go beyond just you though. I mean, a leader can, can't just you know, climb mountains and, and solve problems all by themselves. It, it starts with a vision, and then like anything in business, it has to actually spread out into the entire company. It has to be something that everybody in the company buys into. Everybody says, if our customers don't have a great user experience, if they don't love using this product, then they're not going to come back, we're not going to make money, and it doesn't matter that I don't work on the UI. So, like Zappos. Zappos has That's a great a good culture. Example. Yeah, the, the culture of Zappos comes out in every single touch point, every single interaction that you have with them. It's, it's, it's in the UI, it's on the web, web, web interface. I'm not saying it has nothing to do with that, it's just that it cuts across an entire um, sort of holistic idea of what is the experience of using our product. The word experience is key. You hear experience design, user experience. My job at AOL, uh, we do consumer experience, but really all that's about is making sure that every single person who works on products, who sells them, who markets them, who builds them, who conceives of them, who takes them to the marketplace, who makes the business development deals, all those, you know, who take the, the complaint calls. I mean, every single touch point people have with your product or your service has to communicate that user experience that you want people to have that's going to bring them back day after day, become loyal users, uh, evangelists, you know, the whole, the whole nine yards. So how, how do we bring that into something a little more tactical? Because the idea of, of vision and changing culture, um, that's pretty big. No, it's true. And I, I, think, I think that it, it is easy to slip into this kind of stuff. It's like business book stuff. Of course, somebody has to have the vision. Of course, you've got to change the culture. Of course, every single touch point matters. I mean, we've probably heard that a million times before. And, it, and, and, and I think that's a fair question. How do you do that? Um, what's a real world example of that kind of thing? So um, let's talk about some real world okay. examples. Get a little bit more tactical. Um, talk about some things that you can take home and think about tomorrow when you're in the office. Um, first thing I would like to talk about is a story about Twitter. They were having some issues with their new, new user experience. They were seeing a drop off as people came in and they were trying to figure out why. So they brought in an external UX team, but it very well could have been the internal team, to collaborate with them 
and to do some research and understand what was happening. What were people's motivations when they came so in? So they moved the buttons around and that's No, the it was more than yeah, that. Okay. They looked at the total end-to-end -end flow of the new user experience from the call to action button to the registration form to what happened when they were dumped in. And they found people were dumped in and there was nobody there. So they ended up adding a step to allow people to search for people that they'd heard of, for friends of theirs, so that when they came in, there was a conversation happening instead of an empty room. And they asked and the users, they watched them, they, they watched studied them, them, they did a survey, and it increased conversions 20%. And this was a very simple, very focused flow. Speaking of simple, one of my favorite examples is Dropbox. Um, I don't know if everybody here is familiar with Dropbox. We use it just to, you know, to write this keynote address. Um, it, it has a beautiful user interface. It has a great brand. I love the color scheme. I love the, the fit and finish of the pixels on my screen. So but it's more than that. It's more than that. They've got that part nailed. But if you think about Dropbox, Dropbox is a cloud service. It's one of these things that's supposed to be really hard to solve. It cuts across all these different contexts. And yet, I use Dropbox every day, and I never think about it at all. It's just a folder on my Mac. If I have a file, I put it in. If you, if you put it in there, it updates. I get my copy. And I've been reading about this. Uh, there are so many other ways to sync data across machines, and yet none of them have really nailed the experience and created that, that sort of simple end-to-end -end user experience of Dropbox. Uh, Syncplicity, well, the founder of Syncplicity, I think, was writing about this on Quora and saying that there's a feature they introduced that was real gee whiz that had to do with multiple folders or something like that. And they learned later on that Dropbox had experimented with exactly that same feature. They'd opted to take it out because they could not make the UI smooth or the experience steady. It's better to have less that works great than so, more. So they rethought their UI. They rethought their UI. So okay. speaking of rethinking. Speaking of rethinking UI. <laughs> Thank you, Aaron. Um, another site that I love that I think has sort of changed the way that I at least search for, for, for travel bargains and, and try to plan my trips is Hipmunk. Um, now, Hipmunk does in many ways the same exact thing that Kayak does or Orbitz or Travelocity. It lets you specify a, a flight that you, you know, a trip that you want to go on, and it gives you a kind of aggregated view of all, all the different flights, all their prices, all the length of time. Um, but they have a great visualization of it, and more importantly, they have this kind of misery concept where they show you how long is the layover, how miserable will your flight be, and they, they, you can sort by that. Um, so they really understood the travel experience and not just purchasing a ticket. Exactly. If you think that you're just making a kiosk, to optimize uh, conversion of ticket sales, that's one kind of experience. But if you think about somebody planning a trip, trying to have as good a possible experience as, as they can while they're on the trip, coming back and using your service again, I think Hipmunk has nailed it because they actually make me feel like they understand what it's like to travel. So the last example we would like to share is about Etsy. This is a service that allows um, buyers and sellers of handcrafted goods to meet each other, to sell with each other. They, they celebrate the do-it-yourself ethos. And the service, uh, they think beyond just the UI. The UI is beautiful, it's delightful. They've brought in all sorts of really interesting and quirky ways to, um, to navigate and to browse, like by color. But they also have regular feedback sessions with their users. They talk to them about uh, improvements to the experience. And they have a thing called Etsy Labs, where they bring people in and they teach them how to sew or how to knit or whatever. So they're essentially training people to then become sellers and merchants on the service. So they're thinking beyond just this online product and into this full experience. And it's a very human experience, too. You feel like there's people there. And it's, it's a, the, the actual product online is very elegant, and, and there's a lot of fit and finish, and it's delightful to use. So. Yeah, so, so again, that, that sounds nice, you know. And I, th I think the, the problem is, well, how do you do that? How do you afford that? I know that you're a consultant. You, you teach people about UX. You hear a lot of excuses. What are some of those? So I hear people say, well, we have data. Can I just make experience design uh, decisions based on that data? Data and will do the design. And, and you can make decisions with data. It's a great tool for that. It's a very good tool for figuring out where you might have issues, where you um, might have people stuck in a system. If you do A-B testing and using data with A-B testing, you can actually streamline and refine. A client of ours has been doing A-B testing with our help for the last four or five years, and they've made millions of dollars of extra revenue doing that. But what it doesn't do is give you the spark for innovation. It doesn't show you what users are where they have needs and where there might be unmet opportunities that are more creative than figuring out what's already existing. What else do you hear? The other thing I hear is we're a startup. And you know, startups are bootstrapped. They don't have a lot of money. You've got to be very judicious with where you put uh, your talent. But I think you get one chance to make that first impression. And if it doesn't work well, it doesn't really matter how good it looks. 
So I have a couple of thoughts about how you bring in UX into a startup. Have a founder that's a startup. Maybe that works, maybe that doesn't. Bring a UX person onto your advisory board. I work with a startup in Austin, and we talk just about four hours a month, not very much time, and the work that we've done together enabled them to get another round of funding, and it didn't really cost them a lot of money. You can also bring in a consultant for a couple hours a week or a month or whatever, you know, just a little judicious, um, someone senior who really knows what they're doing. And it's not about making graphics, it's about really thinking about the experience. Yeah, so I have one too, and, and I'm working on organizational change at AOL these days. And one thing you hear is that change is hard, of course change is hard. When, when you hear me say UX is not just UI, it's not just IA, it's this big picture thing, and everybody in the organization has to embrace it, that all sounds great, but then you're like, well, how do we do this? I'm just an engineer, how do I turn into a UX, UX person? My company's been around for 25 years, how do I change the culture? And it starts, it starts with, you know, it, it does um, begin with leadership for sure. You've got to say, this is the new ball game, this is what we're all playing. Um, but then there's tactical steps that you can take, and there's certainly ways that you can get people to focus on the product and focus on user experience and introduce you know, um, wins one at a time and, and just generally um, incorporate UX thinking and, and, and set it as a new kind of standard. So to sort of cap this off and to show you how this can actually have an impact, um, the Design Council in, UK, in the UK has been following an index of 61 design-led businesses and those businesses have outperformed the FTSE. By how much? Um, by 200% <laughs> over the last decade, which shows that a design, design thinking, user experience brought into the culture has a financial impact on the business for the long term. So this, this matters. This makes, this makes an impact. Now how much would you pay? So I think you know, one of the things we just want to wrap up is that uh, you want to think about starting at the top. It really comes from you. You can start at grassroots. If the leadership but you can start doesn't at the buy top. the UX, then the no one else is going to. You can infuse the culture. That's another way Everybody to bring this in. Everybody has to get in. on board. Think holistically, end to end, throughout the entire organization, not just specialists, but you need those two. And then doing tactical things, one at baby a time, steps baby if steps, if that's the yeah. way it goes. You can do it. And, that's the and we're done. Thank and you very done. much. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you.